Thank you, John, for getting us started. <laughs> we've had we've had a, a bit of the giggles around here around the table here this morning. So, uh, thanks for uh, for everybody on Zoom. Looks like we have about fifteen folks on Zoom. So, we appreciate everyone's time and for all that are that are finding us through YouTube. Uh, I'm glad that you're picking up the videos and, and trying to learn uh, all that you can learn from, from the videos as well. So it is uh, Saturday, October the 12th, already already getting into the middle of October, uh, but we're, we're, we're glad, glad everybody's here. So let's go ahead and start the cynical with our entering in prayer, and uh, then we'll get started with a few comments and, uh, and into some readings. In the name of the Father, and the yes, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Spirit. amen. amen. Come to the Lord, God has the great dignity, with his warm hands, and want to embrace my entire day. I want to embrace every thought, every word, and every action, and in all the people I meet, the things I have to do, all my duties. I want all to be in your most holy will. I want to put my whole day right at this instant in your most holy will. So that should I be distracted, or should there be things I forget, they may all be done in your will. Amen. Amen. Come, Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and then kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Remember your congregation, which you have possessed from the beginning. O oh Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. O oh Lord, be with me and with your spirit. Let us pray. O oh God, who has taught the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant us in the same spirit to be truly wise and to ever rejoice in this holy consolation. We ask this through the cross of our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, uh, wanted to start out again with this kind of a reminder, and a uh, for those that may be joining us the first time on the YouTube, or for those that have been with us uh, for a while, just a reminder about the mission of the Queen of Light Cynical. And if you go back, and if you go look on the on on the on the website, you'll you'll see uh, terms like the Queen of Light, uh, the 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 applied knowledges of the divine will, the applied sciences of the divine will. But the primary um, point I want to make is what we try to do in this cynical is to is to take these readings, link them in with scripture and with the catechism, and how uh, display how they all hold hands, and then as as we all accumulate knowledges that we that we gain from our reading in, in the book of heaven, from the conversations that we have, from the comments that we 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 talk through and discuss around, we are wanting to to get to that point where all of us will take the knowledges that we are gaining that are that are in our in our brain, so to speak, but then we're moving those knowledges for actual application into who we are, what we do into our souls so that we become transformed in this divine will. And we move from reading about it and looking at it and watching it. We move that into participating in it, operating in it, possessing it, which is where uh, Christ wants us to be, where the Trinity wants us to be when we are when we are, um, when, the, when the divine will is being done on earth as it is in heaven, it's not being watched. It's not being uh, learned about. It is being participated in. It is, it is the, 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 you know, what we possess in heaven. So as we talk through and go through all our cynicals and the studies and the things that we, we talk about, that's our underlying mission is to, is to try to hold these, these cynicals every week in such a way that we we learn and then we can we can each take what we learn and pull that into 
becoming a, a newborn in the divine will, which is which is that what Louisa was doing almost every day. And so, uh, what I just wanted just wanted to make that point, and and then in the context of uh, you know we 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 draw um, the catechism, we draw um, uh, the uh, scriptures in with with uh, with the book of heaven. And we uh, we have we have we have started last week in our review of the um, um, uh, of giving our fiat. We talked about um, disposition and how all these the, the combination of this information from the Book of Heaven and with with the uh, with Scripture and with Catechism it draws us into coming to understand what our disposition is, and we we all come to a point where. Um, uh, if we're going to stay with this, we'll give our fiat. And then we learn a bit about giving the fiat and what happens when we give the fiat. And we were, uh, we went through, I don't know, eight, nine, ten weeks, I think, of different writings on how that happens. And we, and we, we talked a bit about that. I'm not going to, to, to go back and look at it because we can, you, you can go look at our prior videos and you can also look at part of the, uh, the document that John's got available that's on that's on the web uh, on the website that can that can uh, you can you can download that. But our point is to create a foundation, right? Is to, is to strengthen our foundation of, of knowledge and understanding of this divine will, so that as we move forward and as we get uh, as, as as Louisa took uh, as Jesus took Louisa out into um, the sea of the divine will, he took her further out and deeper down into the sea. And in that reading, there was a lot of fish all, all in all different parts of the ocean that Jesus tells her. That's everybody that's on their path in this divine will. We're wanting to, to take this foundation that we've been talking about, both from understanding and recognizing our disposition and then giving our fiat and how we are, how we are transformed by the giving of the fiat so that those become just part of, of our knowledge. We don't, we don't go back and check that, if you will. That's just a foundation of who we are. So that as we start this next series of, of cynicals, we're going to be having the, I guess we'll kick off after the the uh, the retreat here in November. Uh, we want to go deeper down and further out into the sea and talk about and discuss and, and explore and masticate on, uh, on some subjects that, and some topics that, uh, We'll be we'll be we'll be needing this foundation for so that's why we're kind of reviewing uh, again the, the the these these readings that we had uh, and we're we're wanting just to make sure that it, as we talk about giving our fiat we're all we're all at a, at, a, at an understanding and we're at a different place as we're working our way through the uh, the, 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 the the country that we have our visa with. Or our passport with, but nonetheless, we are all we're all going in the same direction. So to that end, we're uh, we're going to go back to and revisit Mary uh, and I had a conversation last night and again this morning. And Mary's not here, by the way, as you can see, she's online. She's uh, she is participating and helping some people that she knows up in uh, in Ohio. So she's joining us via Zoom as well. And uh, what we had, if you recall, we had that we had some conversation and the discussion about the term yearning. And so Barry's picked up a couple of, of readings that are um, uh, that are very relevant. And we want to we want to step back and talk about yearning and how Jesus talks to Louisa about it in these two in two writings. So, Mary, with that, I'm going to turn it over to you and let you. Uh, um, you know, explain how you want to ex explain it and then um we're not gonna we are not we don't have the writing you know the, the text that we can put up on the i can think do you have it if she lets me know what they are i know she sent me one of them uh, uh, i sent you the email i sent you an email it's very important you get that email <laughs> very important it's very important that you get the email down here i'm sure because there's a document These did you i just the picture i need you to put up the okay. picture all right. Well, you start talking. I'll uh, get the download on the email. Nobody okay. Probably. All right. So um, I'm going to go through two Ooh. writings today, and my I want I'm just going to I'm going to read them, and I'm going to discuss them, and I'm not, and I'm just let me get through them, and if you have questions, save them for the end. Let me get through everything, 
um, so that and then form your questions because they might be answered as I'm going through the document. Aaron's laughing. Why is Aaron laughing? He'll Somebody hear me. That's my face. No, we hear you fine. Oh. It's because I'm making faces because you got a video here. You don't want the video up, right? Oh, I'm sorry. What video? Oh, me? Oh, sorry. Sorry. No, no, no. no, in the document you sent, there's a fault machine video. No, no. Uh, well, I'll send that out later to everybody. Okay. I just wanted to, um, okay. I'll reference it a little bit. All right. Uh, okay. What happens when Mary's not here, you know? I need y'all to behave. Seriously. Brandon. Okay. <laughs> Let me get uh, those out of here. This is good. Okay. All right, so I'm going to start talking, so pay attention. And then, John, if you can't get that document up. All right, so divine will prayer is, is in the order of intention. All right? Order of intention. Your disposition and your intention. So this is from St. Thomas Aquinas. It is a matter of precept. Not only that we should ask for what we desire, but also that we should desire a right. It means the right disposition to ask for what we desire. But to desire comes under a precept of charity, whereas to ask comes under a precept of religion, which precept is expressed in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, where it is said, ask and you shall receive. Now in the Lord's Prayer, not only do we ask for all that we may rightly desire, but also in the order wherein we ought to desire them. So that this prayer not only teaches us to ask, but it also directs all our affections. Thus it is evident that the first thing to be the object of our desire is the end. And afterwards, whatever is directed to the end. Now our end is God towards whom our affections tend to in two ways first by our willing the glory of god second by willing to enjoy his glory the first belongs to the love whereby we love god in himself while the second belongs to the love whereby we love ourselves in god wherefore the first petition is expressed thus hallowed be thy name and the second thus Thy kingdom come, by which we ask to come to the glory of his kingdom. That's from St. Thomas Aquinas. So this diagram, I'm going to focus on the method of how this works, right? Hopefully y'all can see it. So, the, so one, two, and three, and then it goes to seven, I'll explain. So one, two, and three is the kingdom. This is creation. This is how God creates, created us. Um. He created, what did he, what, what did the first thing that God generated was his son. Now, using the words first or then or are words of time. And that's because that's where we live. God created time for us. He doesn't live in time. He lives in eternity. So although I say generated his son, it sounds like, well, first God, the father, then the son, and then the Holy Spirit. But we know that it's the Trinity and they always existed in all eternity so son of man in his kingdom and then it's the manifestation of the kingdom and then the gospel of the kingdom so this is this is what happened in creation this is what descends down from heaven are these first three then you see the arrow to the left oh you know i'm trying to play with my screen and it's on john's screen all right so you see it starts with seven and then you you, you see go all the way to the bottom of the picture all right down to um go further down man fell man fell so see where it says resignation to the will of god commanded and willed oops go away commanded and my picture's in the way. Let me move that. Commanded and wanted will. Precepts, counsels, will of God, uh, will of good pleasure. So, so man fell. And this is all they knew until redemption. So this is, this is the Old Testament. Resignation to the will of God. Commanded and wanted will, which are the precepts, the counsels, and the will of good pleasure, etc. Then our Lord came in redemption. And we could go four or five, right? So they were dispositions to receive the gift, which is the will, charity, hope, 
for the arduous good of the divine will. This is what our saints did. That's why we're able to read from St. Louis de Montfort, St. Um, Catherine of Siena. They all talked about the goods of um, the divine will because they did acts, but they did acts of the supernatural gifts. It wasn't given to them yet, but they knew it was coming. Just as the prophets, and we'll get to this in the one in the readings, just as the prophets knew that the kingdom of redemption was coming, our saints knew the kingdom of the divine will it was coming. So therefore we have Daniel O'Connor and so forth have written books on thy will be done, and he pulls from all the saints. And now we are saying here at our cynical, what Mel just said, is that we at Queen of Light tell you it's here, fully reigning, internally, because that's how God works. First internally, then externally. But if you're not working the gift, then you're postponing the external gifts. We'll get to that. So the saints, after redemption, they made a first, they made a firm decision to do repeated acts of calling down the fiat, and it's thy will be done. The first thing that has to happen is that you have to say thy will be done. And our saints did that. And then dispositions to receive the gift. They 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 caused the dispositions to re, re, receive the gift. I dropped an F there. All right. Now we have the regeneration of the divine will. So now we have the gift was given to one of us, one of common stock. It happened. We're not waiting for this to happen. We're not living supernatural gifts. We now can live divine acts, divine gifts. The new sun in heaven, the new principle of operating and the new depository of this divine will. Divine knowledges and truths, divine acts, not supernatural, as in grace, but divine. He's fully reigning in us. He's here. Seas of eternal beatitude, passports to regenerate others in the divine will, exemplars, model of divine acts. That's what it sends up. So the sun is, because we're doing divine acts, our sons are ascending up and the sons from the, our creator are descending down inside of us internally. Everything's internal right now the kingdom reigns in you right now now as mel has said what we our mission with all of us together it's all of our mission is what do you do with the kingdom that's inside of you because all the power is yours all the power is yours so are you just praying the Our Father thinking that it's a future thing? Or are you understanding that you are internally given the fullness of glory back to God? You've reached the end. For the last 6,000 years, God has been disposing us in the means to get to the end. Now, the end is not fully here because it's not external. It's just internal. But if you desire it and your intent is a pure charity, you're there. All right. So, John, move down to um, number one on the picture. It's like a second page, I think. All right. Kingdom of the divine will in Christ and Our Lady. Um, we're not going to read all these. There's just I'm just putting them up here as reference, and I will send this document out so that you all have it. This kingdom was already formed by me and by the celestial lady. Lady, it already exists. It only has to be given to creatures. In order for it to be given, it is necessary to know it. And since she is the holiest, the greatest creature who knew no other kingdom but the kingdom of my divine will alone, she occupies the first place in it. By right, the celestial queen will be the announcer, the messenger, the leader of a kingdom so holy. Therefore, if, and I, I'm saying this for me, it's not in the writings. If you're stuck, if you don't know how to do rounds, if you don't know how to do your prayer life, if your prayer life is only 15 minutes because you get distracted, 
You need to, as Jesus says right here, therefore pray her, invoke her, and she will act for you as guide, as teacher, and with love, all maternal. She will receive all your acts and will enclose them in her own and will say to you, the acts of my daughter are like the acts of her mama. Therefore, they can stay with mine in order to double the right for creatures to receive the kingdom of the divine will. Since this, his kingdom, God must give and the creature must receive. It takes the acts of both sides in order to obtain the intent. So you go back to St. Thomas Aquinas. Where's your charity? I was trying to express this last week of longing, yearning, desiring. It's up to you. You have all the power. And if you're stuck, the greatest thing to do, that's your greatest sign of humility. And then God can act within your humility. God acts in your humility. And, and throughout 6,000 years, 7,000 years, we've all had that humility standing in front of God. Because that's what prayer is, is conversation with God. And to admit, I can't do this. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't have the full desire. I don't have the full uh, capacity. I, 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 you know, I'm not holy. And that's what he says. Invoke our blessed mother, because this is her kingdom. And she will act for you as guide, as teacher, and with love, all maternal, and will receive all your acts and will enclose them in her own. She will teach you. But you have to keep asking. Asking you shall receive, which is our religion. It's our faith. Asking you shall receive. Remember, Mel goes through the four. You have to know that it exists, believe that you can have it, and accept the gift. I probably said it wrong, Mel. You can intercede if you want. But the four things. And that's what he's saying. Okay, well, believe it. Therefore, if you don't have it, ask our blessed mother. She'll get you there. All right. John, go down to number two. Kingdom. Kingdom has been manifested and formed in Louisa. She was born of common stock. So we don't have to pray in our father, thy kingdom come, that will be done. It is. It is here. She gave the fullness of glory back to God the Father. Hallowed be thy name. She has surrounded God in her internal acts, the glory of God, so that the king could come. What? The, God, the Lord will come again in glory. I'll say that again. The Lord will come again in glory. So hallowed be thy name is the sanctification. It's the holiness of God. It's done. It was done in Louisa, born of common stock. Now God has manifested through Louisa these knowledges for us to receive. We've already asked to do God's will. We already are having God's will done on earth as it is in heaven. Now in us, we are doing the end, the end. The other two are the means to the end. And the end is, hallowed be thy name, the glory manifestation of God, so that God can come again in glory. Your souls have resurrected. When all the souls of the earth have resurrected in the kingdom, of the divine will internally, then the body will resurrect because God does internal before he does external. This kingdom has been manifested in Louisa Picaretta. I don't care who's denying it. I don't care what they say. It's the truth. For eight weeks, Mel has gone over the writing and it's, I think it's in here. Um, these will be known as my gospel. Not the gospel given by uh, the four uh, apostles, Matthew, Mark, Luke and, Luke and John, but himself. These are God's words. They're not Louisa's. Louisa was the secretary. Secretary means secret keeper. She was the secretary of this kingdom. Everything was given, written by our Lord through her. This is his gospel. We got a big fight coming up. What? Never mind. That was a muting. Okay. Thing. All right. So, John, move on to number three, please. Kingdom manifested and communicated to us through the divine will readings. If you knew how much I love these writings, 
They are the manifestation of my kingdom. Can you please understand? Our Lord just said that. If you knew how much God loves these writings, they are the manifestation of his kingdom. If you're not reading every day, why? Why? He loves these writings. Your creator, your redeemer, your sanctifier. The Trinity loves these writings. Why? Read. Now that which I manifest in my divine will and which you write can be called the gospel of the kingdom of the divine will. I'll say that again. That which I manifest on my divine will. That's what God manifested. Not through four uh, uh, gospel writers, but God himself. And which you write. That's all Luis is doing is writing this. Can be called the gospel of the kingdom of the divine will. In nothing does it oppose either sacred scripture or the gospel, which I announced while being on earth. Oh, I think it's just C. Therefore, the knowledges about my will have the virtue of forming its kingdom in their midst, because this has been our purpose in manifesting them. So there's three writings, March 8th, 1928, January 8th, 1928, and then April 4th, 1928. All right. So I'm going to go through two readings. I'm going to go through, and these weren't given to you on purpose. Hey, Mary, can we stop um, one second? Does, sure. Is anybody not understanding what Mary has put forth to us at the moment? Save your question for the end. But, I mean, this is, this is, what it is all about this is this is what he has written and what he has what he has manifested to us and so we're in the middle of this if we are learning about this these just have to become knowns and understood and accepted because when they are the ability to further understand and to take the knowledges that come after this can go deeper and deeper and deeper into who we become. So just keep that in mind as we're, and that's really the point of the last eight weeks and and, I, and some time before that is to get this foundation set on what these writings are and what they tell us. Sorry, go ahead, Mary. No, it's fine. So he calls these writings that he writes in the volumes that they are the law of his will or the gospel of the kingdom. So we've lived through the law, the natural law. We've lived of the law, a written law, which is, you know, given to Mo Moses. Then we live the law of grace, which is redemption. And now we are living the law of love. And you can't find it anywhere except these writings. So, um, the law of his will or the gospel of the kingdom because the truth that he manifested to Louisa is the kingdom that is inside of himself and inside of our blessed mother. And that kingdom of these divine acts manifesting themselves to, to Louisa. These truths were written in her as a law, the law of love. And in this law gave her the capacity to do the acts. And these truths were manifested giving to her and given to her. They were given to her. They manifested you and given to her these truths. And now they are manifesting and being given to you so that you can grow in the divine will. Every truth makes you a newborn. And then you have understanding of that truth. And then you grow in wisdom. Let's go back to the gospel where it said he grew in wisdom. So that is you. You are expanding your capacity you are going deeper and deeper and deeper into these knowledges that are in these writings of the kingdom. Not, not truths on how to act, not truths on, on how to live or love. That was given to us. That's doing God's will. But on the truth of the kingdom, which resides in God himself. All right. Um, okay, so remember, Adam was like a full tree. He was born as a full tree. That's how God created us. And we lost it all with the fall. 
Okay. He was producing fruits right off the bat. From his first instant of his existence, he had the use of reason. The all-infused truths. The all-infused truths of natural knowledge. And some infused of supernatural knowledge that God would reveal to him more and more. Because he would grow in wisdom. He would grow in the likeness of God. So we say that through the fall of Adam, he lost the image and the likeness. Through our baptism, we can go, we get back the image of God. But it is not until we get to the Fiat Voluntas Tua that we are saying, thy kingdom come, that we want the end, which is the glorious the glory of God internally inside of us that we can that the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven inside of us i don't know if i stumbled through that he lost that so the likeness comes to you when you give your fiat and god puts his fiat upon you now your choice is do you stand at the ocean the sea the yeah. sea of all this power of all this wisdom of all this love divine, divine will huh yeah. do we stand at the sea or do we dive dive in and do we? Do we? Saying I just looked down myself. Yeah. Do we dive in or do we stay as newborns because we're too scared to go any further? Are we afraid to to? And I'm I'm not you know just you can think about it and I'm just going to use some ideas of what you're holding on to, but you need to go internally and think of have I really released everything and detached myself from everything and everyone to fully live in this kingdom, to give back the glory of God, the father. So we we've mentioned, we've mentioned, um, mentioned this over and over again, and I'm going to mention it because it's, it's one of those things, devotions, devotions were a means to the end. They were given to us from the saints, but the saints only lived of the supernatural gift. They did not live at the divine gift. So if you've given your fiat, you've reached the end. Mm -hmm. Just think about what I just said. They're all means to the end. Mm -hmm. Redemption was a means to the end to get us to the kingdom. The sacraments were the means to the end to get us to the kingdom, to have the fullness of the glory of God, the father. Now the, the Eucharist will remain with us to the end of time, but it is a means it isn't, it, it was the means to come into you, to be in union with God. So when you've given your fiat with your intent fully to live of the divine will, you are not only in union, but you are in union growing in the likeness of God. Sacraments were a means to the end. The end is hallowed be thy name. The glory of God the Father. So therefore, our Lord will come again in glory. He comes again in glory internally. And then when all the children of light are here, living this gift internally, then he does it externally. Okay. Do we have a question? Or, Paul, you got a comment? You had your hand up? I, I just read something in volume 30 and this gave me uh, an understanding how this growing in love and growing in knowledge goes together you know the gospel of the um, kingdom he's telling that um, Jesus is telling that he's, the divine will is always preparing our heart to receive a new knowledge. He is making like, a, a, it's called knoll, knoll, a pile of love in your heart. And then he puts the seed of knowledge into it. So it has, uh, you know, it can um, grow sprout. there. Sprout. 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 And, you know, this, um, and this he is doing when we are making rounds. And Adam did rounds in creation. And he started to laugh 
the creator more and more. And with this more love, he could give him more knowledge. So this, it's not like, oh, it's gold, all the knowledge goes in my head and then into my heart. Mm -mm. God is preparing your heart to mm -hmm. receive the knowledge. So this growing in wisdom is also all the time, you know, it's growing in love first. That's the, yes. the, the Say that it's the time of love, not of grace, of love. So love is somehow, <laughs> um, you know, the bed uh, in which the knowledge can um, sprout. Yes. God is eternal, infinite, and perfect. So let's focus on the word perfect. He is perfect love. He can't mm -hmm. grow in love. He is perfect love. Mm -hmm. He's perfect wisdom, perfect knowledge, perfect understanding. He's perfect. We just went through that great cynical, and I suggest you all to watch it again because it's so it's so full of knowledge and wisdom in it, and it is heart to heart. Heart speaks to heart. God will only speak to your heart. He will only speak to your soul, but not your. He doesn't speak to your human intellect. He doesn't speak to your human will, and he doesn't speak to your human memory. You are to have dominion over your memory, your intellect and your will by only listening to the divine will, the divine intellect, and the divine memory. That's what Paul is just saying. Love speaks to love. So all souls have the seed of the divine will in them. And when you give your fiat, that seed can start becoming fecundated with the sons of our father and your acts can receive those sons and then ascend those sons up. So Father descends his sons down, speaks to us, acknowledges us. They grow, they sprout, we fecundate them, we have understanding, they grow in wisdom, we get another knowledge, they grow and we understand them, they grow in wisdom. Human intellect is, is your daily job, right? Or how to do something. To God doesn't speak to our human intellect, he speaks to our divine intellect. God doesn't speak to our human memory that likes to remind us of our sinful ways or something, something stupid you, to have dominion over that. He speaks to your divine memory. By the way, the human memory is the last thing to go. It is, the, it is I don't want to use the word hard because God has made this e easy, but you have to learn to have dominion over that human memory. Whenever it wants to call for how bad you are or you've sinned or whatever, you are to say, my soul has resurrected and those no longer exist in me because you're speaking the truth to your human memory. All right, moving on. So means to the end, an example of them. I'm going to give you two examples. means to the end. So let's say you want to go on a trip. Uh, I live in Texas, so you want to go on a ski trip. So you pick your destination first, right? So our destination, as I said, is to give the fullness of glory to God, the Father, in our soul. So our ski trip destination, we'll say, is Colorado. Then you go through the means on how to get to Colorado, what to pack, how are you going to get there? Are you going to fly? Are you going to drive? Um, where are you going to stay? Um, what, you know, the list, Right. But the destination didn't change. The means might change, but your destination never changes. So God came. That's why he says that redemption wasn't the end. Redemption was a means to the end. The sacraments were not the end. They're the means to the end. Yes, this, the Eucharist is, what is it? The summit of, I've lost the words. Hey, summit of the saints. Source and summit of the saints. But, and it is, it gave us unity into God, but it's never been our end until you become the living host. It changes. It changes from medicine, from health, from age into nourishment. It was intended to be, a, it's intended initially in redemption to perform those tasks. And now in the, reality of it being what it, the reality of it being what it is, but the purpose being what it is. It was a means to the end. And the end is uh, to give the fullness of glory, hallowed be thy name. And so the rest of the Our Father prayer is the means to the end of hallowed be thy name. All right. 
Um, all right, so you're all following along, right? So the first reading that we're going to go through is April 14th, 1923. It's a very important reading and it's very deep and very rich and in a lot in it, which we're going to do the best we can to get just to the point of, of the means to the end in this writing. All right. So I'm going to read it. Um, April 14th, 1923, how God in doing his works, 15. which. 15. We just found it's volume 15 for those that are trying to get to it. Okay. April 14th. Right, but April 14th. All right. How God in doing works, which must serve the good of all, centralizes all the good he wants to give in one creature from the human family. I was thinking about all that my always lovable Jesus keeps manifesting to me about his most holy will and many doubts and difficulties arouse within my mind, which I don't believe it is necessary to say here. Then moving in my interior and clasping me tightly to his heart, he told me, beloved daughter of my will, <clears throat> you must know that when I went to do great works, works in which the whole human family is to take part, always, if it wants, my usual way is to centralize all the goods and all the graces which this work contains in one single creature, so that all others may draw as much as they want of that good as though from a font. When I do individual works, I give limited things, but when I do works which must serve the good of all, I give things without limit. All right, I did this in the work of redemption. In order to be able to elevate a creature, a creature to conceiving a man and God, I had to centralize all possible imaginable goods in her. I need to take a breath. I need to slow down. I had to centralize all possible imaginable goods in her. I had to elevate her so high as to place in her the seed of the very paternal fecundity. So just as my celestial father, virgin, generated me within his womb with the virginal seed of his eternal fecundity without the work of a woman, and from the same seed, the Holy Spirit proceeded in the same way with this eternal seed of the paternal fecundity, holy virginal, my celestial mama, conceived me in her virginal womb. She So the father, the eternal father, gave her the seed of power, a seed of generation to generate the word. That's incredible. The sacrosanct trinity had to give of its own to this divine virgin so that she might conceive me, the son of God. My holy mama could never have conceived me without having a seed. Now, since she belonged to the human race, this seed of eternal fecundity gave her the virtue of conceiving me as a man. And because the seed was divine, at the same time, she conceived me as God. And just as the Holy Spirit proceeded at the same time as the Father generated me, in the same way as I was generated in the womb of my mama, the generation of souls proceeded at the same time. So everything that from eternity, ab eternal, from eternity occurred to the most holy trinity in heaven occurred to the most holy trinity in heaven was repeated in the womb of my dear mama the work was immense and incalculable to created mind what'd you do 
Raise the page for me. Wait a minute. <laughs> I had to centralize all goods and even myself so that all might find whatever they wanted. This is why, since the work of redemption was to be so great as to overwhelm all generations, I wanted for many centuries the prayers, the sighs, the tears, the penances of so many patriarchs and prophets and of the whole people of the Old Testament. And I did this in order to dispose them to receive a good so great and to move me to centralize in this celestial creature all the goods which everyone was to enjoy. Okay, I want to pause there. The first time in the Old Testament mm -hmm. that we are told that there will be this great woman is in Genesis. Isaiah sees her. So the patriarchs, Abraham, knew that the Redeemer was coming, that the Son of God was coming, that he was going to be born from a virgin. So for 4,000 years, the patriarchs and the prophets and, and even, you know, little ones that people didn't know about were asking for the kingdom of redemption to come. All of their sighs, all of their prayers, everything. Now, to do a round is you could take all those prayers, make them your own, place your intention on them, and offer them again to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. That's a round. That's an act. All those acts are alive. They might not be signs for them because they weren't given the gift, but they are the manifestation of the glory of God the Father. And therefore you take them, you place your I love you on them, you place your intent on them, and then offer them back up to the Trinity. Okay. And I did this in order to dispose them to receive a good so great and to move me to centralize in the celestial creature all the goods which everyone was to enjoy. And so what did, what did he centralize in, in our Blessed Mother? What are the goods? He opened up heaven so that everyone can enjoy. They could return back to go into eternity with the Father, with the Trinity, heaven. Now what moved this people to pray, to sigh, et cetera, was the promise of the future Messiah. This promise was like the seed of this promise was like the seed of so many supplications and tears. Had there not been this promise, no one would have given it a thought. No one would have hoped for salvation. Now, my daughter, let's come to my will. Do you think it is a sanctity like the other sanctities, a good, a grace? almost like the others which I have given for many centuries to the other saints and to the whole church? No, no. This is about a new era. About a good which must serve all generations. But it is necessary that I first centralize all this good in one creature alone, just as I did in redemption by centralizing everything in my mama. Take a look at how things proceed in a parallel way in order to make redemption come and to dispose souls for it i made the promise of the future messiah so that by hoping for him to come they would not only dispose themselves but find they too their own salvation in the future redeemer that, that they found their own salvation in the future redeemer now, in order to dispose souls to live in my will, to let them partake in the goods it contains, and to make man return to the path of his origin, just as he was created by me, I myself wanted to pray as the first. 
making my voice resound from one end of the earth to another, and even up high in heaven, saying, Our Father who art in heaven. I did not say my father, but I called him father of the whole human family so as to engage him in that which I was going to add. May all hallow your name so that your kingdom may come and you will be done on earth as it is in heaven. All right, so I'm going to go back. He says, so as to engage him in that which I was going to add. There's another translation which uses word so as to bind him. So engage and bind. I think binding is a little stronger of a word instead of engaging. Binding means to contract. Okay, this is important. He made a contract with the father in which he was going to add so as to bind him in that which I was going to add may all hallow your name because remember we lost the glory with the fall of adam and here he is coming as the redeemer and he's saying but that's not the end redemption's not the end may all hallow your name may all come back to the glory may all internally glor glorify you and externally glorify you so that your kingdom may come fully upon earth first internally then externally so that your kingdom may come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So the way you're reading it, cause it's got the ands and the so's and so forth, but they're really like the end is hallow your name. The means are your kingdom come. The means before that is your will be done. So we learn to do God's will before we ask for the kingdom. And we ask, your will be done, your will be done, your will be done, your will be done. And then God says, you're disposed for my kingdom to reign in you internally. So that you can give the glory of God, the father eternally. And he can come again in glory to reign in you. And then it will happen externally. This was the purpose of creation. So you go back to the chart that I did. That was the purpose of creation. One, two, three. And so now because the kingdom has been established in Louisa, one of born of common stock, it can now and does and does reign in us. That's my intent. That's my desire. Therefore, it is. Thy kingdom come. One of bo born of common stock. That's the purpose of creation. And I ask the father that it be fulfilled. Be fulfilled again as it was in Adam. As I prayed, the father surrendered to my supplications. So he signed the contract. And I formed the seed of a good so great. And so that this seed might be known, I taught my prayer to the apostles and they transmitted it to the whole church. For 2,024 years, we have been praying the Our Father. Maybe 2,000, because this is during his three years of preaching. As I prayed the Our Father, as I prayed, the Father surrendered to my supplications, and I formed the seed of a good so great. And so that this seed might be known, I taught my prayer to the apostles, and they transmitted it to the whole church so that just as the people of the future Redeemer found salvation in him and disposed itself to receive the promised Messiah, in the same way with this seed formed by me, the church might pray and repeat my very prayer many times and might dispose herself to receive the good of recognizing and loving my celestial father as their father in such a way as to deserve to be loved as children and receive the great and receive the great good and receive the great good that might will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Okay. My mind is, is thinking, or he's speaking to me as I'm reading this. So we are reaping what we did not sow for 2000 years. The church has been sowing this seed, this desire that the kingdom be known that it reign on earth and that God could come again in glory. We are reaping what, we did not sow as the great saints before us have sown for the last 2000 years. Yes, we pray the Our Father. Well, what now are you going to do with what you are with what you are reaping? When you pray this prayer, do you understand all power is yours? 
it's not it's not abstract it's not something that's going to come it's not future it's here it's in you what are you going to do with this you want to sow the seeds in others and to do that is to the prayer life, the constant communication with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Rounds, 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 rounds. Do them whatever whatever way you are drawn to do them. Just start practicing. And if you don't feel like you're doing them, call upon our ladies, both Blessed Mother and Louisa. Because they desire this kingdom. You to become a generator of generators. Just like the pre the church um, desires and longs for priests. Why? Because the church wants the priest who can consecrate the Eucharist. So the bishop generates priests who generate the Eucharist. But now but that was the means to the end. The end now is that all become living hosts. Because you have the fullness of the glory inside of you. And the king has come to reign in glory in you. So that's what I mean by generating. Generating generators. Gener generating divine acts. Not supernatural acts. Those were of our saints. But divine acts. That's the gift given to you. Which they long for. Just as the prophets and the... And the um, um, I forgot the word. Patriarchs and the prophets long to see what the apostles saw. We long to see what those will see when the kingdom is fully reigning internally and externally. But you know, it's up to you. It's up to you. He says he'll wait all eternity. Oh, he'll, he has all of eternity. So if it takes centuries for us to finally realize like, you know what? You know, my family wants me to do this, this, and this, and this. But I need to at least give an hour to do in prayer rounds. And I need to take this seriously. Or as he says, we have all eternity. We'll wait centuries. I need my prayer life. I need that constant communication with God, heart speaks to heart. And truly, in all humility, we don't really know how to talk to God. That's humility. He loves that. And when you're humble like that, then he can come in and act. Uh, so. Go ahead, Mary. No, go ahead. I was just going to say Judy has her hand up. Okay. I no, don't I, don't, I don't want to interrupt Mary when she's done. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm going to, I'm going to keep reading. All right. Where am I, John? All right. See. All right. Seed. In this seed. All right. In this seed and in this hope that my will be done on earth as it is in heaven, the very saints have formed their sanctity and the martyrs have shed their blood. So just as the patriarchs were redeemed because of the promise of the future redeemer, the saints have formed their sanctity and the martyrs have shed their blood because of the future promise of the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. It is the promise of that that they were able to shed their blood. It was the promise of that that they were able to gain their sanctity. It was the promise of that that people grew in their love and desire for our Blessed Mother. It was in, it was in, in, in the... Um, thy will be done on earth as in heaven that Mary gave us the rosary to meditate upon the life of Christ to do our acts because of the future knowledge that the kingdom is coming on earth as it is in heaven they were means to the end so the whole church prays and just as the tears the penances the prayers to obtain the Messiah were directed toward that excelling virgin whom I was to dispose in order to centralize such a great good in her so that they might receive their savior, even though they did not know whom she would be. In the same way now, 
when the church recites the Our Father, it is precisely for you, Louisa, that she has been praying for. So that I might centralize in Louisa all the goods that my will contains. The way, the how, the divine will may have life on earth as it does in heaven. And I needed to say Louisa there because he says they were in parallel. So she was the virgin of Italy, of Corrado, that belongs to the church in Rome. And our blessed mother lived in Nazareth, which was part of Jerusalem, the church at that time. Okay. So they're all disposed. Now, our blessed mother was disposed of heaven, not just to incarnate the word, but the word was incarnated in her because she had all of the glory of the father internally inside of her. God is not going to incarnate himself again in us. It's his divinity that gets placed and reigns inside of us. So he didn't incarnate himself in a human, in his humanity in Louisa. He, it's his divinity in Louisa. And we are her copies. We have two mamas, the queen of heaven and earth and the little daughter of the divine will. We will not have the fullness that those two women have, but we are pretty close. She will not be canonized to say, I love this because I just heard this the other day and I just loved hearing it because it's, it's what I've always said. She will not be canonized a saint so that you can throw these volumes on a book on a bookshelf and walk away. This is about the kingdom to fully reign internally in souls and externally as God created us to be. All right, move on. And even though you are not known, by echoing my prayer, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, the church prays me, presses me to centralize all this good in a second virgin. So that like a second savior, she may save unsafe humanity. Oh, I'm going to read that again. Let that sink into you. So that, like a second savior, she may save unsafe humanity. And making use of my inseparable love and mercy, I may answer my own prayer, united to that of the whole church, making man come back to his origin, to the purpose for which I created him, that my will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is precisely the living in my will. And everything I keep manifesting to you pushes you to this, confirms you in this. All right. So he was talking to Luis and now listen to him. He's talking to you, every single person reading this, and hearing this, this is precisely the living in my will. And everything I keep manifesting to you pushes you to this, confirms you in this. This is the great foundation I keep forming in your soul. And in order to do this, I keep centralizing in you all the graces, past, present, and future, which I have given to all generations because nothing can exist outside of the divine will so everything that our the trinity has given will now live in you even more i double them i multiply them because since my will is the greatest the holiest the noblest thing, which has no beginning and no end, in order to place it in one creature, it is right and decorous that I centralize in her all possible goods, innumerable graces, divine purity and nobility, so that this will of mine may have the same courtage it has in heaven. It is the same will that operated in redemption and wanted to make use of a virgin. 
What portents and prodigies of graces did it not work in her? My will is great. It contains all goods. And in operating, it acts with magnanimity. And if it is about doing works and doing good for all humanity, then it puts all of its good at stake. Then it puts all of its goods at stake. In other words, if you're doing this with full intent to give the glory of God the Father, you take yourself, you fuse yourself, you fuse yourself in what? In his divine will and his divine love. And you do all your acts in that manner. Heart speaks to heart. Now it was to make use of another virgin in order to centralize its will in her and to begin to make known that its will must be done on earth as it is in heaven. And to begin to make known that its will must, not may it be, understand, must. Now it was to make use of another virgin in order to centralize its will in her and to begin to make known that its will must be done on earth as it is in heaven we're no longer saying you're oh, i forgot it <laughs> that would be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done uh-uh read that to begin make to make it known that its will must not may it must be done on earth, earth as it is in heaven and if in redemption it wanted to come to save lost man to satisfy for his sins which man had no power to do. Uh-oh. Where's that word power? And if in redemption it wanted to come to save lost man, to satisfy for his sins, which man had no power to do, and to give him refuge and many other goods which redemption contains, now wanting to display even more love than in redemption itself, by making my will be done on earth as it is in heaven. My will comes to give man his state of origin, his nobility, the purpose for which he was created. It comes to open the current between itself and the human will in such a way that absorbed by this divine will, being dominated by it, the human will will give it life within itself and my will will reign on earth as it does in heaven you have all the power it's up to you it's up to you it's up to you it's not thy will be done. It's your will must be done on earth. It, it, it has to reign in me and in creatures, in all of us. Universality. It has to, it must be done on earth as it is in heaven. So, I took notes. That's what I'm reading from, if I can get to it. All right, so all so in our blessed mother, all the grace that everyone will have, each individually, she had it all in herself and more, much more. He said, I needed the prayers of all these people's of all, you know, the, of the Old Testament praying for this, wanting this in order to arrive to this. What moved the people to pray to yearn, there's that word. What moved the people to pray to yearn was the promise of the future Messiah. Okay, we have been given the Our Father, which they have prayed for 2,000 years. And in this cynical on Saturday, it's not that we're asking you to yearn for it inside of yourself. We are asking for you to yearn for it to reign in all souls so that it can re re uh, uh, reign not only internally, but externally. And what does that external light, what, what, what is it? Let me see if I can find my notes. 
It is the light, your internal, it's the little lights of our internal uniting with the great light of God on the first day of creation. Let there be light, the eternal light. United with our internal light. That's why he says, you won't need the light of the sun anymore. You will have the fullness of everything. Will we always be learning more and more about our father in heaven? Absolutely. Because he, he is the unknown. We have intellectual, human intellectual words, names for him, creator, redeemer, sanctifier. We know his attributes, mercy, beauty, love, so forth. But we don't know him. We truly don't. The great saints have told you that. We're just trying to, whites. We're, well, we're not trying, sorry, that was a weak word. We take the power of the divine will, incarnate it inside of us, and like the greatest sapper, removes everything of human in us to become divine, so that you become the divine light, the glory of God the Father, so that the Lord can come in glory. And as Paula said last week, this gospel is known as the manifestation of the glory of God. So your yearning is not about you individually. It's about the yearning of hallowed be thy name for every soul. Every soul. It's why you don't, I've said this before, in the past, remember, you don't name your sheep. Don't worry about what the world is doing. Don't look at the sins of others. That's not your job. Your job is to take the power of the divinity and to generate it into souls. It is up to them to dispose themselves and to have the intent to receive it. Can't do that. You can't do it for them. You do it in them. But you've got to be doing it in them. And the way you do that is your rounds. So um, I want to go a little bit further. I'm going to do, this isn't, John, you don't have these, but I will send these, These I took a bunch of, just been writing. That's why I uh, haven't brushed my teeth yet. So anyways, um, while you're looking there, let me add one other thing. This reading, it contains so much reality in it that if if you go back and would suggest that you do this and read it even slower than what Mary was reading it. But it several weeks ago we talked about Mary and about Mary being the queen of uh, the, the the divine heaven. He just talked. He just told us. He just told us in this reading the reality of that and why and where, and where that came from. We've had many conversations about that that redemption was a step to the end, which was sanctification. He just talked about that and explained why and how and and how he does things in steps. We talk, we've talked a lot um, um, about the the tools, if you will, of operating in the divine will and the why and it, and, and as, as we've learned as we've just gone through here we talked about the 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 kingdom come that will be done on earth as it is in heaven that that is the end we mary used the uh, the the uh the visual of going to colorado but there's also not only not only do you know where you're going in the end and not only do you plan your way with the the car or the bus or the or the hitchhiking or the plane or however you're going to get there and where you're going to stay and what you're going to eat and the restaurant you're going to. There's also the tools to go up the mountain and down the mountain. And these tools he's talked about are in the why and the how that are in the book of heaven that he's provided. He's talked about the parallel, you know, we've talked in the past about the parallel of redemption and sanctification and and how the the redemption the, the 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 Virgin Mary was the, the 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 conduit the tool that's probably not the right word 
whereas Louisa was the conduit, is the conduit and the tool for the divine will and how he centralizes. We've, we've mentioned that in the past about how he centralizes these great things that he does for all mankind versus the step-by-step -step or act-by-act -act when he wants to do a work or something. And he's just told us again about the centralization of redemption in Mary and the centralization of of sanctification in Louisa. So when we take the reality of these, or we take these readings and convert them into it's real, it's, it's really here, but it's real. And then we listen to what he is telling us through Louisa from the context of reality, then it's, it's actually quite clear and easy to see what A, the plan has been all along, and what our role in it, and what happens, the effects that happens when all of this comes to pass. This is this is a, a wonderful reading that everybody should probably write down in their books just to go back to when uh, when necessary. And even and even when you need help, he says, well, where do you go when you need help? I mean, doesn't this the understanding and just the, the what he's given us with Mary here, or or in this writing, and 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 how she has. The part she has played in all of this, it makes perfect sense as to why the church places her where they place her, whether they net it and whether they totally know the details behind it or not. It makes so much sense as to why she's there, and why we all, why we always say, you know, go to Mother Mary in 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 uh, times of trouble, and uh, not to quote a Beatles song or anything, but <laughs> uh, but nonetheless, it's 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 a great reading, and I would just suggest that you. Wherever you're keeping your list of great readings that you go back to to, to do put that in there because this is this is a, this is a really a really good one. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna. There's another reading, John, but I'm not gonna read the whole thing. I'm just gonna do one part of it. I'm actually gonna do one part of two readings. I want you to this this paragraph because it's very important that you guys understand this. It's volume 29, September 12th, 1931. I'm just gonna read one paragraph, right? Volume 29, September 12, 1931. You don't have to go there. Just listen and listen to um, listen to this. All right. So in this tabernacle, this is Jesus talking. In this tabernacle, I do my day by carrying out everything I carried out in the 33 years of my mortal life. In this tabernacle, I do my day by carrying out everything I carried out in the 33 years of my mortal life. And just as in everything I did and do, the prime purpose, the prime act of life is the will of my father, that it be done on earth as it is in heaven. So in this little host, I do nothing other than implore that one be my will with my children. Okay. We've had the tabernacle for 2,000 years. 2,000 years, our Lord has prayed this prayer. Why do I keep emphasizing 2000? Because it's the tabernacle represents the tomb. So he has done already two days in the tomb. We are in the third day. What happens on the third day? He resurrects. We resurrect. Our souls have resurrected by living in the divine will and then our bodies. But it's up to you. It's up to you. What are you going to do with the power of this gift? Are you still asking for the gift? Or are you using the gift? Or are you asking and using the gift together? Which is probably a better way to, to, to address it. We are in the third day. This is the third day. He resurrects on the third day. We resurrect on the third day. It's been given to us. All right. All right, let it be done on earth as it is in heaven. So in this little host, I do nothing other than implore that one be my will with my children. And I call you in this divine will in which you find my whole life in act and you by following it, ruminating it and offering it, unite yourself with me in my Eucharistic day to obtain that my will be known and reign upon earth. And so you too will be able to say, I do my day together with Jesus. 
So another way to do around is all of his tears. You take all of his tears are still living prayers, still communications between him and the father calling down the kingdom. Take all of his prayers, all of his tears. I'm sorry. Take all of his tears. Lord, I take all of your tears. I make them my own. I place my love you on and with the intent to call down your kingdom into all of my brothers and sisters, that your kingdom may reign upon earth as it does in heaven. And I offer them to the father. That's around. Take his drops of blood. Take his, take his words. Take his steps. Take his acts. Take his healings. Take everything you want to take. Take one of the wounds that he suffered in his physical passion. Remember, he suffered internally for 30 years, his passion, before he started preaching the gospel. And then in 24 hours, he suffered it externally. So you know now what he suffered internally because he gave it to you with that knowledge in the hours of the passion. So take one. Take a part of it. Do a round. Give it to the give it to the Trinity to call down the kingdom. It's the power you have. But you have to believe. And if you don't know how to do it, go to your mothers. Trust me, they will teach you. One's Italian and one's Jewish. They will teach you. They want this. All right. The other reading, John, that I'm going to do is, um, and I'm not going to do the whole part, but I want to do this one part. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Don't get annoyed at me. Um, it is the reading. <laughs> John, do you have it in the... It's, so, I think so it's, while, you're, while you're looking there, let me add to about rounds. The beauty of rounds, as Mary just gave you a variety of, of options, but the beauty of rounds is you can go and do wherever you want to go and do. You're, you know, it, there's not a, uh, a recipe for rounds. It's the, it's what's the end game. It's doing the round. If there's 24 hours, you know, if you want to start with the passion, there's 24 hours in the passion and every hour is there's something you can go and participate with Jesus in. And so it's your, and you can, you can take on, you can help out, you can aid, you can comfort him. There's just, there's just a myriad of ways that you can, you can do around. You can, you can walk out in your back. I think maybe last week, some, someone said you can, you can sit out in your backyard all day and you can you can do rounds in your backyard every day with what you uh what you can see and what's manifesting itself in your backyard that's the beauty of the creativity that you've been given that we've been given about operating and possessing and and controlling if you will um go just go anywhere where how wherever you choose to go whatever you want to try to repair reorder redo for um you're you know it, you're open past present and future to sense. participate wherever you choose to you're not it. limited by time and space that's right there's right. no by time right. and space. do it constantly during out the day that's the power every time i say power i sometimes think about the avengers and the superheroes you have so much power it's not just a word it is the power of god himself inside of you i mean what more that's incredible and it's given to you in the divine will. Fuse yourself in him and fuse yourself in his love. And together you have it. You have everything to call down this kingdom. The power of that. The, the apostles in their supernatural with the blessed mother, because the gift wasn't given to them, were able to call down the Holy Spirit in the kingdom of, of sanctification. To where they were able to come out and be priests and bishops, to baptize, to consecrate, to forgive sins, to forgive sins. That was supernatural. You were given divinity, divine, so much more. That's why he says the new savior or the, 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 the part about the savior in that reading. Think about it. Here's a homework assignment for you guys. Um, I don't think it's in this reading. 
but you'll read it because you're all going to read. That's not the promise, but that you're going to read and attain these knowledges. He says in these writings, he uses the words human generation. I can't see you guys' faces, but do you understand when you read the words human generation, I want you to stop and reread the sentence or the sentence before this on human generation. And why is that? Why would he say human generation? Mel, any idea? Michelle, Aaron? Why would he say human generation and yep. reread the line there? I didn't. It's not in the reading I'm going to give this. It's just a homework assignment to look up the word human generation. All right? And so I'm just asking. Is, you that, one, is that plural or singular that you're using? Why? It's, it's singular. Human. Well, he said human generations. But why use the word human? Because he's not talking to the animal life or the vegetation life. Well, that's all. I mean, I There's, because you, Mel, Michelle, Aaron, George, and every single person that has said Fiat Voluntas Tua, no longer are the human generation. You are the divine generation. So your homework assignment is to do on your little laptops or readers or whatever, uh, search word of human generation and do a search word of divine generation. You are the second generation in the womb of God. You are the divine generation, the glory of God the light that reigns inside of you those are oh you guys just froze oh there mm -hmm. y'all there yes yeah. <laughs> the two generations so in the october 27th 1922 reading he says the children of light and the children of darkness that light is the glory of god the father it's incredible you are no longer or not you were chosen. You need to know this when I read this reading. You are the divine generation, not the human. The human were able to do their acts supernaturally through grace. You do all your acts through the divinity. You are the divine generation. All right. So, John, we're going to. The great right one? Yeah. This is volume 16, by the way. The words of Jesus in the garden. Not my will, but yours be done. In this way, he established with his celestial father, the contract of the kingdom of the divine will upon earth. Remember before that reading was about the binding contract. Now he establishes it. In this way, he established with his celestial father, the contract of the kingdom, the divine will upon earth. I was thinking about the words of Jesus in the garden when he said, Father, if it is possible, let this chalice pass for me. Yet non mia volunta said to a fiat, not my will, but yours be done. And my sweet Jesus moving in my interior told me, my daughter, do you think it was for the chalice of my passion that I said to the father? Father, if it is possible, let this chalice pass for me. Not at all. It was the chalice of the human will, which contained such bitterness and fullness of vice that my human will united to the divine felt such repugnance, terror and fright as to cry out, Father, if it is possible, let this chalice pass from me. How ugly it is, the human will, without the divine will, which enclosed it itself in each creature. How ugly it is, the human will, without the divine will, which enclosed itself in each creature as within a chalice. There is no evil in the generations of which it is not the origin, the seed, the source. And in seeing myself covered with all these evils produced by the human will, before the sanctity of my will, I felt like dying. And indeed, I would have died if the divinity had not sustained me. But do you know why I added, in as many as three times, non mia voluntas said to a fiat, not my will, but yours be done? 
I felt upon myself all the wills of creatures united together, all their evils. And in the name of all, I cried out to the Father, may the human will be done on earth no more, but the divine. May the human will be banished and may yours reign. Therefore, from that moment, and I wanted to do this at the very beginning of my passion, because it was the thing which interested me the most and the most important one, to call upon the earth, the fiat voluntas tua, on earth as it is in heaven. I myself said in the name of all, non mia volunta said to a fiat. So therefore, again, he's showing you, he took what the end result at the beginning of his passion and the means was to go through the crucifixion to get to on earth as it is in heaven. From that time, I constituted the heir of the fiat voluntas tua. From that time, I constituted the contract was signed between the Father and our Lord. But hold on a second. From that time, I constituted the heir of the fiat voluntas tua upon earth. And by saying it three times in the first one, I impetrated it. In the second, I made it descend. And in the third, I constituted it ruler and dominator. And in saying non mia voluntas said to a fiat, I intended to empty the creature of their wills and to fill them with the divine. Before dying, I don't know why he says that. Before dying, since I had only hours left, I wanted to negotiate with my celestial father in my, I wanted to negotiate with my celestial father, my prime purpose for which I came upon earth, that the divine will take its place, that the divine will take its first place of honor in the creature. This had been the first act of man to withdraw from the supreme will. And therefore our first offense. All his other evils are in the secondary order. It is always my will to have primacy in all things. And even though the fruits of redemption could be seen before its effects, it was by virtue of this contract, which I made with my divine father, that his fiat would come to reign upon earth. Realizing the true purpose of the creation of man and the prime purpose for which I came upon earth and that man could receive the fruits of redemption. Otherwise, my wisdom would have lacked order. If the origin of evil was his will, it was this will that I had to, to order and restore, reuniting divine will and human will. And even though the fruits of redemption could be seen first, this says nothing. My will is like a king who, though being first among all, arrives as last. Being preceded for honor and decorum by his peoples, armies, ministers, princesses, princes, and the whole royal court. Therefore, the fruits of redemption were needed first, so that the royal court, the peoples, the armies, and the ministers could be found worthy of the majesty of my will. <laughs> Therefore, the fruits of redemption were needed first so that the royal court, the peoples, the armies, and the ministers could be found worthy of the majesty of my will. But do you know who was the first one to cry out together with me? Non mia volunta said to a fiat. It was my little newborn of my will, my little daughter, who felt such repugnance and fright for her will as to cling to me and trembling, she cried out with me, Father, if it is possible, let this chalice pass from me. And crying, she added with me, non mia volunta said to a fiat. Ah, yes, you were together with me in that first contract with my celestial father, because at least one creature was needed in order to validate this contract. Otherwise, to whom give it? To whom entrusted. And in order to render the custody of the contract safer, 
I gave you all the fruits of my passion as gift, lining them up around you like a formidable army, which while forming the royal court of my will, wages a fierce war against your will. All right. The first contract was placed in Louisa. And in the writing, she says she's, she's afraid. If Adam fell, who lived in the kingdom, and all this natural beauty is exterior and internally, he falls. How, how am I not going to fall? And he just said, because I line up all my acts around you like a formidable army. You aren't in and out. Never say those words. Never believe those words. If your intent, if you can repeat with me right now, non me Voluntas said to a fiat, then it's done. If you are repulsed by your will that you don't ever want to see it again, it makes you cry to even think that you lived of it and you want it gone. And you can say, Father, if it is possible, let this chalice pass from me. You're in. It's the gift. The contract has been signed. It's been signed with Louisa first, one born of common stock. And now the contract has been signed in you. You will grow in the likeness of God with as far as you want to grow into the fiat voluntas tua. If you only want to stay on the sidelines and dip your toe in the water because you're afraid, then stay there. But if you want to dive in, he doesn't limit you. The only one who limits you in this kingdom is yourself. But don't ever believe in in and out. Because that would make God not speak the truth when he says, I, um, I gave you all the fruits of my passion. He did. He gave us the, uh, the knowledge of the 24 hours. What he suffered internally and externally as gift. And they're lined up around you like a formidable army because knowledge is the army that surrounds you. While forming the royal court of my will, wages a fierce war against your will. So your human will, your human intellect, and your human memory, you have dominion over. You have all power. So when a thought comes into your mind, crush it. Send it to the lake of fire, as Michelle says. Send it away. It's not longer yours. And when a memory wants to come through of something you've done in your past, crush it. You've resurrected. There's no sin in heaven. It can't come with you. And God doesn't see it anymore. You have to take that dominion over your three faculties. Your will, right here. When you're repulsed by your will, you don't want to know it anymore. And you can say those words, non mia voluntas said to a fiat, done. Then it's your intellect, your thoughts, and then it is your memory. And those you have dominion over, because you have been given all power. It does take practice. And humility is the practice. Admitting, why do I keep having these thoughts, Lord? Help me. Blessed Mother, Louisa, help me. They could do that with a humble heart. Okay, where am I, John? Therefore, have courage in the state in which you find yourself. Dismiss the thought that I may leave you. It would go against my will, since I keep the contract of my will deposited in you. So be at peace. It is my will that tests you and wants not only to purge you, but to destroy even the shadow of your will. So in all peace, continue your flight in my will and be concerned with nothing. Your Jesus will do in such a way that everything which may happen inside and outside of you will make my will stand out even more and will expand its boundaries in you, in your human will. I myself will maintain the rhythm in your interior in order to direct everything in you according to my will. Before we heard hope, hope in this, and hope resides between faith and charity. So faith, he just said it. I believe it. I hope in it. 
It's going to destroy everything in me. And then we will fully live of charity, pure love, nothing, nothing else but love. All my acts will be love. The divine love will proceed from me. I occupied myself with nothing else but the will of my father. And since all things are in it, I occupied myself with everything. And if I taught a prayer, it was no other prayer than this, that the divine will be done on earth as it is in heaven. However, it was the prayer which enclosed everything. Therefore, I did not move, if not around the supreme will. My words, my pains, my works, my heartbeats were filled with celestial will. So do I want you to do. You must go around it so much as to let yourself be burned by the eternal breath of the fire of my will in such a way as to lose any other knowledge and to know nothing else but my will only and always. Questions? Mm -hmm. Where do you live? Who lives in you? <laughs> we got Paula and Judy both with hands up. Judy, I think yours has been up a little bit longer, <laughs> so you may want to go first. Okay, prepared, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, one thing. Um, First of all, that's really important is um, in the blank uh, books, the April 14th reading is not there. Um, I believe it's in the calendar readings, but, um, and it may be under another date. Um, I love these blank publishing books. I think they're the best, but... Um, <laughs> But that, that reading is so important and it's missing. So you might have to look it up online or it's in the, uh, the Amazon one, the big blue book. Um, and that's just a housekeeping thing. Um, I had a, a few thoughts that um, kind of tie things in. Um, the same reading that you, you had been reading from June 15th, 1926. Um, I believe earlier. And um, in that reading, Louisa is talking about being Kativa, being so bad. Um, and I think uh, I can certainly relate to that, um, having doubts, um, especially early on, that um, how could I be good enough to receive this gift? Um, the answer is I'll, I never will be. But um, but that's okay because it is a gift. Um, but yeah, I'm going to pause you there, Judy, because he says in our, in the writings that, that, that he wants you to have that humility, but you got to believe that you do possess the gift. I, 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 I it, 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 there's no purpose in this. If we don't believe that we possess the gift. And but he said, you will always, always not see yourself as perfect because he is eternal perfection. And therefore we will always be growing in knowledge and wisdom and understanding. So we will never see ourselves as perfect. And that's, and that's, I'm always able to push that out and just move forward. And I guess I'll, I'll add in here that I would urge anyone who has any doubts um, to just keep going forward. Um, if you, if you're not sure if you've been given the gift or not, just live as if you are. Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, you had said something earlier, but asking and using at the same time. Um, but when, um, what he was, what he responds to her is rather, I see that your nothing feels the weight of the all. And Mary, you had emphasized, um, it's up to you. This is up to you. And, you know, it's really stressing how important that is. And, and yeah, my nothingness feels the weight of the all. Um, and, uh, but, but just, just, just continue forward and move on. Um, you, 
spoke about um, one of the readings you were um, talking about uh, if you have a hard time with whatever the prayer is, the rounds, whatever it is, if you don't know how to do this, give it to Mary and she will receive your acts and enclose them in her own. And one thing I wanted to point out, it, I'm actually on that exact reading today. I, I think I may have been reading this for a couple of days, um, June 15th, 1926. Um, it, if, if Mary encloses our acts and makes as if they're her own, here's what he says in that same reading. The same happened with my queen mama, as she always operated in the unity of the light of the supreme will, all of her acts, her office of mother, her rights of queen remained inseparable from her creator. So much so that when the divinity unleashes the acts of beatitude to make the whole celestial fatherland happy, it unleashes with them all the acts of the celestial mama. Well, you know what? She just made my acts her own. Mm -hmm. um, yep. So that just really struck me. And especially that that's in the same, um, the same reading. So all the weight that we feel and all the imperfections and, and, you know, am I delusional? <laughs> um, but, but I ho hopefully those, don't last long and you can just push them away and, and just see, I'm not delusional. I know I can do nothing. I know that all of this is what God wants. Oh, and one more thing about the chalice in another place, it might be the hours of the passion. He talks about the chalice being the, the pain of that is is knowing that not all souls will be saved. So when we're able to say, let this pass, let this chalice pass from me, it's the same plea that all be saved. I want what God wants. And, and I know that it's not, it, 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 it can, it's not gonna happen. And it's painful. Um, and that I, that's part, there was something else, but I'm just going to let um, Paula say something because I always love what Paula has to say. You're on mute, Paula. First, I want to say thank you, Mary. You're welcome. Thank you, Jesus. And yes, of course. Um, you know, it came to my mind, and I wrote it in the chat. Uh, what is written in John one twelve thirteen? But to those who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God. To those who believed in his name, who were born not from human stock or human desire, or human will, but from God himself. Mm. You know, this is the divine generation. Yep, the divine generation. And, and uh, I like to go, you know, it's so incredible. In the first reading, um, where it's described how God elevates our mother to this high point that she got this seed of fecundity. <laughs> she got the seed of the uh, of God's paternity as mother. <laughs> and you know we, when we talk about um, generate generators, it's this seed. Mm -hmm. For us it's all was to be mother, you know. Uh, this is Luisa is the second mother. But uh, we are also called to be mother because did, did you ever think what is the will of God? His will sh um, should reign on earth, but what is his will? God is Abba, 
father, that means origin. And his will is to generate his son. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is his will. And he, and he he creates for his son, you know. <laughs> but this is the will of the father to be Abba. And so this seed of fecundity, it's so incredible. He wants to give us this seed of fecundity yep. to to generate his son. Yep. It's one thing, but, and then there's another point. You know, it came to my mind that the kingdom has been three times on earth. Mm -hmm. with Adam and in the house of Nazareth. It was, mm -hmm. you know, it was the end, but but it was also the uh, condition of for the redemption. You know, redemption was to bring the kingdom, but it was necessary that the kingdom already was there. Otherwise, Jesus would not have come, had come. So it was in full Vigo in the house of Nazareth. And... I'm still, you know, somehow it, this is related to first Adam to the father, the second to the son, and now the third, and last time is to the Holy Spirit. But I don't know, really understand this because there is a difference. I'm, I'm really, you know, it's not that we go back, really back to where Adam was. There mm -hmm. is more. Mm -hmm. But I do not, do not understand yet. But I have a strong feeling, you know, with this free um times of the kingdom yeah we actually right. return to a place better than the state of adam before the fall just but you're right and i think it's i think we're going to dive into it when we get further into soul and spirit um because adam didn't have to live with the spirit did he but we we had it we had to grow this internally inside of us so it is um the soul and spirit inside of us um that we have to live from so we believe in the body blood soul and divinity of our lord so jesus had both a human soul and a divine soul and adam always had the divine until he fell you know and there is we go back not to the state of adam before the fall but even something better than that and I'm sure it's in these writings <laughs> and we'll go deeper into it. Uh, but the paternal seed was placed in our blessed mother before she even said fiat to being the mother of God. We'll be, I'll be with you just a second. Mm -hmm. um, and that becomes so, so because Jesus had incarnated himself in his humanity and blessed mother. So Louisa received that same paternal seed. And guess what? Every one of us who say fiat voluntas tua, that paternal seed is placed in us. And you're right. We haven't, we haven't really, I know in our synagogue, we really haven't talked about that paternal seed and the generating and going further into that. And we're hoping that we can, with what we just do, what, you know, heart speaks to heart um, and the, uh, when you give your fiat, what does that mean? That now that these cynicals are behind us, that we can move forward into paternal seed, generating divine lives. What this looks like, what this feels like, what we do in this. Um, you know, all through the volume, she's doing rounds. And I've seen people, I've seen that book, and I think it was done by Sister Asunta on the rounds. And it's very... Uh, it's not, they're not deep, you know, it's place of my love you in trees or plants or so forth. But we, I think that the breath being disposed more and more to go further into the rounds and taking more of his acts and doing more with them. So we'll see where our Lord leads us. But that was our, um, what these last cynicals have been about was given our fiat that you understand that you said, not my will, but your will be done. I don't. I, I can't live of it anymore. I don't want to see it. I don't want to smell it, touch it. Nothing. It's so. I only want this. I want. I want to define. I want. I want to be what I was called to do. I want to be what I was chosen to do, and that is to live the divine generation. I don't want to see the human generation. I don't want to fall. I don't. I don't want it. And 
understanding what that means and living it. Kelly, you, you have your hand up as well. Hi, um, Mary, I was just wondering if you could explain what divinized means again. Is that, I know you say it doesn't matter what stage you're in, um, but I was listening to another podcast and I'm trying to comprehend the divinized. Um, is that when we come into the kingdom fully, like we're fully possessed with God and then we're able to create these divine lives or are we doing this as we go along and we're get, getting there bit by bit, sip by sip? Because you tell, no. oh, oh, I have that the wrong. Minute, the minute you give your fiat and you want this, it's a gift. Right. It's, it's not merited. Before in the supernatural life, in the life of grace, in the human generation, there was graces given. So you would, you graces, and then, and then you could, you know, St. Louis de Montfort or St. Catherine of Siena or the other ones, and they would live these graces where they would be uni to, to grow into illumination, uh, to be purged, illuminated, and then unity of God. Okay, so to be demonized is you give your, I love you, you give your fiat, I don't want to know my will, I only want to know God's will. You give your fiat, and he places his fiat upon it and you've been divinized because okay. nothing can exist that isn't of God. Sin can't live in there. No darkness, nothing. Everything has been divinized. What is hard is to wrap your um, human intellect around it. And that's why I said your human intellect and your human memory have to be dominated. You have to believe what you've said know what you said, have the understanding and the truths are reigning inside of you. So though for those truths are the army to conquer your intellect and your memory to become divine memory and divine intellect. So first the will, then the intellect, then the memory. But it does take your dominion. It takes your act. And the more you do your rounds, the easier it gets. Okay. Will there be hard times? Sure. He says that in this one of the writings where he says, I still test you. Not that he tests you as a as a horrible English teacher that wants to test you on some <laughs> essay that you know you're never going to pass. But he wants to test you to see if you're going to know what to do with all the knowledge that he's given to you. So if you're being tested, you're feeling dry. You don't know how to do a round. As um, Judy just said, go to the mother. This was in the writings. Go to the to the mother. In, in the first prayer in the blue book, the the Blessed Virgin Mary in the Kingdom, the Divine Will. It says, "What, Mother, I love you. Love me too, and give me a sip of the will for my soul, and let my all my acts be under your maternal gaze." You, she'll never deny you if you're humbly going to her and saying, "Yeah, I don't. I can't even. Oh, da 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 da. I don't even know where to start. So I'm going to start there. Blessed Mother." I love you. Love me too. Love me too. In this moment, right now, I'm. I'm. Uh, I got to get out of what just happened, or I'm struggling. I'm dry. I can't think. I can't. Whatever. Just give me a sip of the divine will. Let all my ex be under your maternal glaze. Gaze. I keep saying glaze. I could know it. Gaze. And um, I got you. Done. And you're divinized. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. It's just not that, a, go ahead, there not supernatural it's divine you're not the human generations you're the divine generation this is celestial language and obviously we're going to say this internally can't walk around don't make a t-shirt saying i'm a divine <laughs> i'm the divine generation don't do that um soon they will all know that you call down the kingdom for all your brothers and sisters internally and then externally the resurrection of the body. You are in the third day. We're in 2024. How many centuries do you want this to wait? Because he says, I have all of eternity. I'll wait centuries. It's up to you. It's and up it, to you. Yeah. And it's, it, I, I think sometimes where we can get confused is the giving of your will the, the, the turning it over, the handing it over that we talk about, you know, just in conversation a lot about, um, it is, 
it is not because it's, hey, you know, I went to a few cynicals and I think this is a good idea. I think I may try to do this. It is an intentional con, con, uh, uh, what's the word I want to say? Com committed, yeah, yeah, okay. it's an act, it's, 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 it, but it's intentional and it's after, after, uh, mastication. It's, I mean, it is a, I keep coming back to the word intentional that's because that's the first section in the in the second writing but it is a it, it's it's when you have you've learned enough to know this is this is where I'm going and I'm making this intentional act it's it's how he describes it in the reading on the passport we've now you've made that intentional act to sign your name on the passport and then from that he takes over so there is the learning, there is the elevation, there is the ennoblement as both the catechism and as, as he says in the writings. But he covers it. And so when you're there and when your intention is pure, and you know that, you'll know whether it's pure or not. You'll know whether you really intend that or, or I, hey, do I just want to go along with the crowd? But don't go along with the crowd. You've got to be intentional with, with that decision. But once you made the decision, He's covered it, and he's and he's and he's doing everything with us. We're learning how to do things with him, so to speak. Or go back to the to the to the to the bicycle, the tandem bike from last week. But so we're trying we're trying to learn more than what he's doing. He's 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 on the way with it, and we are on the way with it as well. Um, so it's but it but it is with that intention, and then it it's there. Hey, Mel, I got to go. <laughs> I was thinking I was just going to take it the first hour and that Mel could have the second, but I see that we've gone the whole two yeah, hours. So I, uh, I, I knew better than that, Mary. That's okay. We all knew better than that, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but this poor little kid, he wants to go see his grandparents and I took longer. So I'm going to pray on my own. You guys finish, all right? Will do. All right. I love you all very, very much. And with all my heart, I want you to believe these writings. I want you to call down the kingdom for my children and for your children and for our grandchildren okay. that it's in your power. For all children. That it, for all children. Obviously, yes, all children. That it's in your power. That we never have to hear again, my children left the church, or my children did this, or my children did that. You want the remedy, this is it. And he's given it to you because you've said yes. The contract between the Trinity has been written in your soul. So do your part. Amen. Stop Amen. doubting and never, ever believe somebody who says you're in and out. He did too much work, 6,000 years to get us back to this place for us to believe four words, you're in or out. Are you kidding me? All right. Love y'all. I got to go. I'm going to hang up. All right. Uh, we'll wrap up here right. with Judy and Paula. I'm going to reverse order. Paula, you go first this time. You see your hand still up. Unless. You know, it's um, it's a call. You know, we, we say yes. We make this decision. We sp spoke. We are speaking this fiat, but it's a call. You know, we are called to be this. We are already <laughs> what we will be. We are already this. It's not, um, it's only that we say yes to the call. To be, a, there are this, you know, these two generations um, birthed by God the Father. And when I look on my um, path, I, I, you know, I have, I still have remem memory of my past. And uh, I went through a time where I was like, oh, it's impossible for me, you know, with all. And then, uh, but then I made, it made like somehow click. I dived very deeply in this darkness of the human will to reconquer this darkness with the light, you know. But I nearly forgot who am I. But with the with speak with reading uh, with this 
und speaking fear. I more and more remember who am I, you know, a child of light. And with coming into the light, you know, I con conquered all this dark stuff, you know. It's much more easier for others to go out it. Yeah, it was, but it was, I was really in a state that I nearly forgot that I am a child of God. But it was. I don't know if it's understandable. Um, so it's we can have very different past because uh, God wants all aspects, you know, all what uh, the 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 dark stuff and also the you know the the devil and so they like to keep um, their um, but they will not their um, dominion, but we reconquer this. We bring yeah. all this back into the light. And so we have, we are called and we have different paths. It doesn't matter at all. It's just to remember who we are. And we do this in, then we have this um, longing and it's speaking, uh, uh, you know, saying this fear, uh, this um, very uh, strong decision, uh, yes never um, shaking and so, because it's a call, you know, they are already children of light. Yeah, It's not, um, it's just that we start to remember who we are and to live what we are. Right, and it's it, a good way to put it. In the, 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 in the creative mind, sometimes it's hard to, to grasp that, but once, you let go of trying to grasp it and then just understand what he's doing, what we are doing and how we are uh, adjusting who we are, as you say, that that through, through, through whatever has drawn us to this point, however we've come to understand our disposition, what he tells us is we, we've, we've already said yes to being here and we're now just getting to that point and part of getting to that point is like you said it's it is pushing off the when when the when the when the the old memories come back and and they want to they want to try to interject and play cat play havoc with you you physically give them a stiff arm and you can say i, I this is something i i do whenever uh that this happens is i physically say stop it I, get out, leave me. And they will, because you do have dominion over it yet. You can tell them to stop. And then that's the way of, to your point, we ultimately get down into that darkness or to that nothingness um, to where we become, we're relearning about who we are and what we were called to do. And and that's that's what we all go through in some form or fashion and whatever path we get, we, we, we find ourselves here. So. Judy, hands still up. <laughs> yeah. Um, Mary had referred, I think she read at least part of this from um, January 4th, 1924. That's the one about the chalice. Um, but regarding um, what she was saying about uh, testing, Jesus says, so remain at peace. It is my will that tests you, wanting not only to purge you, but to destroy even the shadow of your will. So in all peace, continue your flight in my volition and be concerned with nothing. Your Jesus will make it so that everything which may happen inside and outside of you will make my will stand out even more and will expand within you the boundaries of my will in your human will. And the, I mean, let that say to you what it says to you, um, but it, he, he says, he, I want not only to purge you, this is purgatory and yeah, purgatory. and it oh. and it is gonna hurt 
sometimes. Um, but the, the earlier volumes especially, um, he, for my experience in the early volumes was he showed me the little things that would put me in purgatory. And I'm still seeing him. He's still working them out. That's the difference is that now they feel so much like sin. Whereas before it was just something, well, this is my right. This is, um, you know, I, I don't, I don't have the words because <laughs> I don't feel that way anymore, but, but my, my selfishness, my, my self-importance, um, my not being nothing. Um, and, um, but, but he says, continue your flight. So he'll, he'll work these things out and yeah, you'll feel like you were falling. Um, but really it's just a way to exercise that muscle point out here. This is what I mean. This is what I mean you need to do. And now you noticed it. So do better next time. But it's not actual sin. It, it's just he's really, he's really digging down and pulling out the tiny things. I I'm going to apologize in advance for the years. I'm, I'm assuming that y'all are going to have to hear me continue to use this as a backdrop. But. Everything you just said and all that and, and how you described it. And I like to be simplistic and 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 use that as a way to for an understanding, hopefully a way of understanding. But I'm gonna go back to the bicycle. And when we put Jesus in the front on the front of the bike, of the tandem bike, he's gonna take us wherever he wants to take us. And we are going to grow in our trust that no matter whether he's going through a river, whether he's going through a mud bank, whether he's going through a tornado or a hurricane, whatever he's taking us through, we will we will get what he's talking about about this peace and 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 let me do. We're going to get to the point where we're sitting on the back of that bike, and it doesn't matter. We're going to see what he's trying to give to us wherever he takes us. And it's going to be tough because there's going to be a period of time where we're still going to want to try to move that handle wheel, handlebar. There's going to be a period of time when I don't really like this that you're taking me to. Put on the brakes. But, but yeah, and I may be trying to put the brakes on, but, but that's not what we won't be doing that. You won't be doing that. We will be taking whatever comes to us and we will continue to pedal and we will continue to understand that God loves us and he is every, everything that he's taking us through is for love of us. And we're going to go through, we're going to go, you know, in a lot, a whole lot of different places. And when we get to, when we can get to the point that, uh, that it doesn't matter that I'm taking my hands off and I'm looking everywhere, everywhere you're taking me, I am trying to find whatever, whatever you want me to see in this then then we that that will be the the peace that we will enjoy from wherever he's taking us and it will come after we've given everything up and because because we'll, we're going to give up our desire to be in control we're going to give up our desire to stop from what he's doing we're going to give up in our desire that uh i don't want to go there that take me and i'll go and uh and and i am i am i am living with you as you want me to live with you and so i, I i'm gonna I'm, like i said i apologize in advance for the number of times that i'm going to pull that example out and use it but i think it's so fundamental mm -hmm. that 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 again we're talking about the foundation as we start moving forward we talked we talked pretty deep today we want to continue to go deep and deeper but but it but having those fundamentals in place are important and how we can each come to an understanding to to 
to to break out of, of our desire to try to move that because we're not because he's still in control so all right we've uh i think we've gone about two hours and 15 minutes so that's that's about par for our enforcement anybody else any comments but we'll go ahead and 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 call the kingdom down unless anybody else would like uh tim you've got a, i see your hand up go ahead Yes, I just want to thank you for such a, a wonderful, wonderful meeting today. The cynical, so outstanding, and uh, the happy, holy tears and divine tears today. Um, it was just outstanding, and I'm looking forward to the next one. Thank you so much. Thank you. We're glad you're here. Appreciate appreciate your time too. Thank you. Okay, well then, let's go ahead and call down the kingdom. Then, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Descend, O Supreme Well, come to reign upon the earth. Descend, O Supreme Well, come to reign upon the earth. Descend, O Supreme Well, come to reign upon the earth. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day of daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of the body of Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, into the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and in memory shall be, world without end. May the will of the Father, leading on to the Son, and the power of the Holy Spirit, reign in me. Amen. And if you're looking for something you might want to do with your time this next week, deconstructing the Our Father from our Father, through thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, and and shortening them down as Mary did and as the reading did as well. There are many readings where you can see some of that deconstruction of the Our Father uh, to, to give it some deeper meaning and understanding. Because he also tells Louisa that the second part of the Our Father uh, after that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, starting with give us this day our daily bread. When you understand the first part, the second part becomes that much more understandable with what he's trying to do. So pull phrases and words of, 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 the, of the first part of the Our Father, put them, put them in your word search and see what comes up and read through there. And you'll you'll be amazed at kind of how, how we become more and more and more knowledgeable of, of, of the Our Father and how it, uh, uh, you know, we, we all know how important and what it what it means in terms of the, this third fiat. But uh, if, you, if, you, if you're looking for something to do or somewhere to read, try that for, for this next week and see how, see how that comes to you. I, I, I think, uh, I don't know if it's Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, but there's one that it actually says super substantial, but and when I add in super substantial bread, give us this day a super substantial bread, it, it kind of ties into a lot of stuff. It's just, <laughs> it's emphasis. It's more than just yeah. like his flesh. No, no, it's 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 deeper. Yeah. It's more than yeah. just the bread. bread like yeah, I, it, bread of, you know, something. It's right. No, it's but, life. Yeah. But there's there's some, there's good readings on the Our Father. Again, if that's an area you want to delve into on uh, on your on your free time, I should say. All right, everybody have a great week. Thanks again for being with us. Uh, Thank you, guys. Appreciate you being here. Bye-bye. See ya.